Good morning, everyone. Well, I guess it's afternoon now. It's one o'clock. So good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for our live webinar today, The Future of Social Trends for 2024 with Jennifer Mann of Key Concepts Marketing. I'm Lindsay Young. I'm the director of the UHV Small Business Development Center and want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day and your Friday and uh, joining us today. So real quick, we'll go through a few slides about the SPDC, and then we will let uh, Jennifer take it from there and learn some new, uh, new trends for the year. Uh, so before we get started, and while people are uh, joining in, which I will let in as, as we uh, move through the next couple slides, um, I want to take a minute just to share some tips and tricks that might make your session run a little more uh, smoothly and help you get the most out of your time with us today. Uh, so first off, the webinar shouldn't be considered a uh, legal or tax advice. I don't think we're going to have that issue uh, given our topic, but you never know. Um, additionally, the webinar is being recorded, so um, no need to fast type or speed write. You're going to get everything uh, sent to you after we wrap up the webinar and uh, it has transcription as well. Oh, and you'll have the slides too. Um, I'm gonna ask that you use the Q&A section for any questions that you have versus the chat. It's just a little easier to make sure that we hit all of your questions um, at the end of the presentation and they all stay in a nice little area for us. So you'll see the Q&A icon at the top of your screen and it's, it should be right next to the chat icon. So speaking of chat, if you'll go ahead and use the chat button to introduce yourself, let us know where you are tuning in from. Um, it helps us know who's on the line, but then also making sure that our platform is operating smoothly. Everybody should be in listen only mode, and we currently have mics and webcams uh, turned off and muted. And that helps our bandwidth on our end to make sure that you're getting um, all of the presentation and all of the video from Jennifer and I. And if you are having any audio issues, which happens from time to time, uh, be sure to check your speaker and audio settings by using the three little dot button uh, with the word more at the top of your screen. And uh, just keep in mind that your internet connection can really affect the quality of sound that you're getting uh, through your computer. A little bit about us. Uh, the Small Business Development Center is part of the Texas Southwest SBDC network. Each um, university or community college that you see on your slide hosts a small business development center that covers a number of counties in that particular region. And at the SBDC, we are wholly committed to supporting and empowering entrepreneurs. Our sole mission is to foster small business success. And our goal is to provide you with training and mentoring and resources that you need in order to start or grow a successful business. Um, additionally, we are funded in part by the state of Texas and the SBA, as well as our host institution, uh, to provide small business support to our community. And we are considered a resource partner of the SBA as well. On this slide, you will see that our particular SBDC network spans from El Paso to the Gulf Coast and all the way down to the border. So we have a huge a section of Texas that we service as a network. Our center is shown in red and covers 11 counties in South Texas, and we are hosted by the University of Houston, Victoria. If you're located outside of our network area, outside of that red section on your screen, uh, you'll see a QR code that you can scan or you can go to americasbdc.org to find your local center by entering your zip code. And what will populate is the center that is closest to you uh, that you can contact for assistance. So there are about a thousand plus centers nationwide. And so you are truly never far from an SBDC or any small business uh, assistance. Our services are at no cost and they are confidential and completely client driven. Uh, from startup to expansion transitions, we are available for the life cycle of your business. We do it all. We run the whole gamut of small business. So we encourage you to take full advantage of all of the ongoing services that RSBDC or your local SBDC offers. 
and uh, sign up today to receive some assistance and uh, learn about the resources that your SBDC can provide. Uh, it's important, I wanna add that the time that your advisor uh, spends with you is dedicated to only you. It's only dedicated to your questions and your business. And so it might take a little bit to meet with your advisor, but I'm telling you, it is worth it. Uh, our advisors provide personalized uh, confidential advice. They help you develop a, small, a strong business plan or help you find funding or gain the skills and the knowledge that you need to achieve your goals. In addition to the one-on-one -on -one advising services and training opportunities, we have access to several specialty resource centers, uh, which you see on the right side of your slide under specialty resources. And access to those centers and advisors are at no cost to our clients as well. So keep in mind that though ad business advisors don't provide legal or tax advice, um, we leave that to our, <clears throat> excuse me, to our lawyer and CPA friends. Now, I want to introduce Jennifer Mann. She is our speaker today and serves as the Chief Operating Officer at Key Concepts Marketing. With a relentless drive for success, she spearheads the company's capabilities and collaborates closely with clients to develop and execute tailored marketing strategies that drive revenue growth. Drawing upon her experience in marketing, nonprofit organizations and organizational growth, Jennifer's dedicated to assisting clients in achieving heightened business growth and visibility. Her commitment to excellence ensures that Key Concepts Marketing surpasses customer satisfaction, retention, and overall company goals. Jennifer graduated with her Bachelor of Science degree in communication from the University of Houston, Victoria in December 2022. And let me let this person in real quick. Hold up. Uh, residing in Victoria, she has established herself as an integral member of the community. Another person, sorry. <laughs> um, and actively engages with various organizations locally. Presently, she is the president uh, for the Victoria Professional Express Network, a chapter of America, American Business Women's Association. And uh, Jennifer has also made substantial contributions to the Victoria Chamber of Comber Commerce Ambassador Board of Directors and multiple PTO boards for her children's schools. Her exceptional accomplishments have been recognized through multiple Women of the Month awards presented to her by the Victoria Professional Express Network. And Jennifer is also Google certified in Google Analytics and Google Business Profile, which allows her to make data-driven decisions for any business that she gets to work with. She is married to her husband, Josh, and together they have two children, Callie and Benjamin. Jennifer and her family are avid bowlers, and both of her children compete on competitive bowling teams. How fun. She enjoys eating sushi and spending time with her family and friends. So at this point, I am going to take a moment and stop sharing my screen and allow Jennifer to share hers. And like I said, uh, please feel free to use the Q&A box. Please feel free to use the chat. We encourage um, all of it. And I will be monitoring and um, working through both sections to make sure that all of your questions are answered or um, different items in the chat are answered and uh, we'll tackle all the questions at the end. So hope that sounds good. And Jennifer, with that, I'm gonna turn off my camera and uh, pay attention to the Q&A. Awesome, and y'all can see my screen, right? Good. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you everybody for joining me today. Um, I hope you're having a good afternoon. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. This is probably my third or fourth presentation that I've been honored to do with the SBDC. So I love being able to get my ideas out there for y'all and help you uh, grow your business. So today we are gonna be talking about the future of social trends. Um, just some things that I um, have done some research on and some trends that we're seeing for 2024 in the marketing side. Um, um, so yeah, I hope that y'all will enjoy and be able to take some things away. Like Lindsay said, we'll be sharing this with y'all. Um, so you will uh, get a copy of all of this uh, for your records. 
Uh, so just a couple of the things that we will be talking about today, um, the AI revolution, there's no surprise there. I'm sure you've heard the term AI. Um, it is everywhere and everything that we do. So we'll be talking about how it's being used in social media. Um, talking about beyond video, reels are a big topic right now. Uh, they are are everywhere, right? Everybody's talking about you got to be you got to have reels, which is true. That's great, but I also want to give you some other tips that you can use beyond just doing reels um, that will help you have sustainability with your social media. Uh, visual trends or some graphic trends that we're seeing for 2024. Um, how to make some meaningful connections with your customer. That then leads me into your customer puzzle and who is your ideal customer and where you should be meeting them at. Uh, and then the last thing, which is probably one of the most important things is the ROI. How are you going to um, make sure that you are getting some ROI or return on your investment through um, social media? So we'll talk about a, a little bit of everything today. Uh, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is some um, AI. Um, I have a quote here. Um, from Judy Woodruff and it says, you may not realize it, but artificial intelligence is all around us. It is. Whenever I was doing some research and trying to get some more ideas for y'all on how AI is being used, I was actually a little surprised at uh, some of the things that I was reading and like, wow, I don't think that I realized that that was AI. So um, yes, and then some really cool facts here, AI in the social media industry was estimated to be about $2.1 billion in 2024. So that's what is, it is expected to generate this year. And by 2029, we're looking at AI uh, having a uh, $7.25 billion industry. So AI is here to stay. Um, it is rapidly growing. Uh, so I hope today you'll get to find some ways that you can utilize AI in your business. So these are some of the things that I'm seeing of how AI is being used more concentrated in that social media realm. Um, so social media content, I think this is probably the one that most people are most familiar with when you have services like chat GPT, um, that you can go and ask it to create you a caption for your social media. Um, so content is probably one of the biggest ways that we're seeing AI uh, being able to go in and have it help you uh, create well thought out uh, content to be able to place across your social media. This goes beyond social uh, website content is now almost always being driven through AI. Uh, so uh, content specifically is, uh, is big, but there's also some uh, content as far as graphics. There are now some AI tools that can actually generate content, uh, I'm sorry, graphics uh, to go along with those captions that you're writing. And I'm going to give you some examples of those here in just a little bit. Um, the second way that we're seeing AI on social media is automatic messaging. Uh, for specifically on Facebook, there is a, and I'm going to show you this in just a minute, but there's a way that you can actually um, have some preconceived questions. It'll automatically send them a response. You can choose how you want it to say. You can actually type it out yourself so it sounds like your tone, uh, but then it, it kind of goes so far and then it sends it to you saying, hey, okay, now it's your turn to start talking to this person. So um, I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit about how you can be utilizing that in your social media. And then the last thing uh, that I'm going to talk about today um, on the AI side is getting in front of the right customer and how some of these AI tools can help with that. So the first thing is the social media content AI tool. So here's a list of them. Uh, these are just some of the ones that I've either used uh, personally or in my research I have found to be pretty legitimate. So the first one is ChatGPT, ChatGPT. Um, and so this is more content related. It's not going to spit out a graphic for you. Um, it gives you multiple ideas. It will give you, uh, you can even ask it to put emojis in your captions with you. So if you're not utilizing ChatGPT, I would highly recommend, it is a free service as of now. Um, I have heard that it could be, uh, potentially become uh, a, a paid service, but I would highly recommend you logging in, whether you take that content directly or not, which we're gonna talk about as well. I would at least give, give you some ideas of how you can formulate those captions. 
Um, now site is one that I believe also does uh, captions and graphics, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Alley Writer AI is another caption based one. AdCreative.ai is a creative one, so it will help you create a graphic. Um, Hootsuite is one that is actually a publishing tool. Uh, it is a, um, you can go in and schedule out your social media, but it also has an AI feature where you can put in uh, the topic that you're wanting to write about and it will spit out the uh, caption based on your business. Um, and then Facebook Publisher actually has a little bit of AI integrated into it. Uh, you can go in and, and talk to it and then also it'll um, it, tell you when the best time to publish is based on your audience. So you can put in, I want to make a post or here's the post that I want to make. And it will generate based on when your users are most likely to be online and it will spit out um, a, a recommended time and date for you to release your content. Um, so interactions with customers is super important. This is what I was talking about with the messaging software. So you can see here on the right side of my screen that this is what I was talking about. You can go in, you can actually type what you want the question to be. You can type in the automated response. It uh, po uh, automatically populates the person's name. So it actually sounds like somebody is talking to them. Uh, this says, you know, hi, Jennifer, please let us know how you can help. And then it would pop up however many questions that I'm wanting it to pop up. So this first one says, can I learn more about your business? And maybe my auto response could be something along the lines of, hi, we're a full service marketing and advertising agency how may we help you or maybe the next question from there might be something along the lines of do you currently run your social media or are you currently running pay-per-click ads or whatever that question might be what I would utilize this for is to gather as much information from the client that you will need to then step in and have a meaningful conversation and all of that groundwork is already already done so it's going to save your time it's going to save um you know maybe even your sanity how many of you have ever been on social and you maybe you've run an ad about something or you've boosted a post and then you get the same questions over and over and over again um, and so this is a way to help eliminate some of that and eliminate some of your one-on-one -on -one time that you have to have with the client but on the end journey on the customer side they get that personalization like they are um, talking to somebody so this is a great feature here um, and you can do this on both your just your regular messenger on your business page which is what you'll see over here um, if you go into your business suite there's an automations tab or an automations uh, column that you can select and it brings you here um, and you can set up if you want to have an instant reply um, you can select if you want it to go to Instagram and Facebook um, and then you can uh, uh, edit it that way you can also have an away message set so let's say that you have strict business hours and you're not available after 5 p.m you can have a message you know that automatically populates at 501 that tells people hey we're you know we're away from the computer or we're closed we will get back with you tomorrow morning um, and so I would highly recommend to do that this section as well is also on Facebook ads um, so if you are Facebook or Instagram if you're running ads on either of those platforms and you have them directed uh, your your main call to action button is message us which means they're going to send you a message to your Facebook Messenger, uh, you can have these questions built out to help dive down. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention as well is if somebody answers five questions, four questions right off of the bat, those people are going to be a very qualified lead for you. Whereas if somebody clicks on, let's say your ad um, and they don't answer any of the questions, they are not going to be as qualified as a lead. So you as the as the, the person receiving these messages, let's say you log on for the day and you're wanting to see who should I respond to first? That's what I would be looking for. If somebody actually went through and answered the four questions or the three prompts, however many you have, they actually answered all of them. One, that just means that they are a qualified person. They're interested. They want uh, your services, right? And so I would start there. Whereas if somebody only answered one question or hasn't answered any of your questions. Um, so just a little tidbit there that if someone actually 
is going through those questions. They're not a bot, um, most likely, and they're actually uh, pre-qualified for you in a sense. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is getting your business in front of the right customer. So Facebook and Instagram ads has a great, great service called Advantage Plus Audience. And what this does is it kind of reads your followers on your uh, profile, and it's going to kind of target people who look like them, not physically, but people who search like them, people who interact like them. Um, and so this A plus advantage audience is a great tool, especially for somebody who is um, running their own ads. This is a great way to utilize AI um, to help you and help figure out who should I be targeting. If not, if you don't use this service, which you can see here, um, switch to original audience options, it's going to give you that option to figure it out yourself, right? Your how, what age do you want to target? Um, what gender do you want to target? What, and I'm not talking about geographical area, I'm uh, specifically talking about demographics. Uh, and then you can search and add all of the different demographics if they're interested in dogs, if they're interested in, um, you know, if they're a homeowner, if they uh, have multiple vehicles, things like that. There's tons of options in Facebook if you wanted to do it yourself. But if you're not sure, who exactly your audience is, and I'm going to help you figure that out later, um, then this is a great tool to help you gather that information. And one of the things that I always tell people with Facebook ads is you never want to start it and forget it. Maybe you start it for the first 30 days and you run it as this A plus audience advantage or advantage plus audience. Maybe you run it for 30 days, kind of see how it performs. And then if you feel like it's just not there, or you're not getting enough qualified leads, you can always change that. You can go back and add in those targeting parameters yourself. But I always recommend somebody, if they're just starting out, go ahead and run it this way. Uh, it's a great way for you to get that interaction um, without having to know 100% every person that you're wanting to target. Um, as well as placement. So when this is talking about placements, it's not talking about placement on Facebook or placement on Instagram. It's talking about where inside of Facebook is this ad going to be placed? Is it going to be a reel is, or a story on Facebook? Instagram is a reel. Um, is it going to be in the news feed? Is it going to be in the marketplace or when somebody search with, ser searches within Facebook? Where is the placement of this ad going to be? That's also AI driven. So um, very, very, very good tools at your fingertips here through Facebook ads um, if you're wanting to run ads. Um, these are just some best practice tips that I wanted to share. AI is great. It's a great tool when used. However, there are some downsides to it. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you review all of the content before you um, place. AI, especially chat uh, GPT, that's the one I'm the most familiar with. I do know that they state that they um, cannot guarantee that it's not a uh, plagiarized. Um, and so it's very important to not necessarily just 100% copy and paste the content. Uh, it's important for you to review that content, make sure that it sounds like you are talking. Use services like ChatGPT to uh, get you a base started and then tweak it from there. Um, the other thing is to ensure compliance and data privacy. None of the AI tools that I have seen are going to guarantee this. So this is uh, specifically for uh, businesses that have um, like HIPAA violations or, um, you know, they have really like tax. Uh, there's very specific uh, verbiage that you need to be using. This is something that I would highly recommend making sure that you review it because it's not going to guarantee that it is compliance with your industry. Um, and then I, I want you to monitor your user uh, feedback if you start using some AI. And the reason I say that is because there are some industries that AI might not be the best for you, um, whereas they're really wanting that personalized touch. I could see something like the SBDC being very um, personalized to the customer that just using strictly uh, AI content might not go over as well with the client. So monitor your user feedback. If people are saying like, 
oh, I don't like this, or this sounds too professional or anything like that, monitor that and start taking note of that. One thing that I have seen with AI, um, especially in the content realm, I haven't used it so much on the uh, design side as much as I have on the content side. Um, there's certain words that they like to use, um, you know, ex excellent or, um, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that I have seen, but there's there's sometimes that you can see that and you're just like, eh, I don't normally say that word or I would never really talk like that. So keep that in mind. Also, the other thing that I have noticed is that sometimes it can be very emoji heavy. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well. If you are using services like AI, um, you know, uh, maybe modify it to where it doesn't look like it's so much generated by a computer and there is a little bit of human touch. As much as we um, know how much of an industry AI is going to create and how many billions of dollars it's going to generate, um, human touch is always going to be necessary and it's always uh, going to be wanted and needed by your customers. So relying 100% on AI is not the best route to go. So I would recommend that even if you use it as a base to just always have that personal touch in your content. Okay, so now we're going to move to beyond a video. Um, again, I mentioned this earlier, reels are like the hype right now, TikTok, everything, right? But how can we create sustainability in our social media? One of the biggest things that I'm seeing right now is social media as a whole, this is Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of them are becoming more and more used as a search, search engine. When I entered the industry, the marketing industry, you know, five years ago, that was not the case. The biggest search engine was Google and you had to compete and play Google's game to be able to get ranking on that search engine. And that's still true, but we are seeing higher and higher amounts of people, especially younger generation uh, Gen Zs, uh, using social media platforms as a search engine. And actually there's a statistic here, 44% of consumers are using social media platforms as a search engine. 44, I want to say that Google was around the 48 mark, no, 40, I don't remember, but it was like a high 40 as well. So it is important to realize that there are a lot of people, especially that younger generation that are going to source out their information on social media. So what makes that important for you to know? It is important that you have organic written content. It's going to go a long way. So when we say that, what we're saying is static post on your page, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's very important because that's what people are seeing. If we spend all of our time just doing reels or just doing stories, I know on Facebook, unless you're posting it as a post, if you're just posting it in your story, it's going to go away after 24 hours. And all of that content is now disintegrated and you have no substance there when people are searching. So it's really important that you have static posts throughout your page that have good, solid information that people will be that people will find useful. And so um, don't just rely on the this hit, this trend reels right now. I do know on the Instagram side, you can save your reels as a static post or you can choose to have them just um, on your, your story and it goes away. Um, again, if you can choose to have it as a post and a reel, I would always say go that way because it will live forever on your page and help with that substance. Um, long form videos are coming, making a comeback. We've seen this a lot on YouTube. YouTube is kind of starting to come back a little. Um, but again, we're really seeing those two to five minute videos are having more success on social media rather than the 15 to 30 seconds. The 15 to 30 seconds, I think of like fun, hip, quick. Um, the two to five minute, I think of sustainability. I think of content, um, raw, raw content, right? Um, people do use social media to kill time. Uh, most people, 
work right during the day and they're not just living on their phone. And so they've had a long day. They've gotten kids to where they need to be. They come home, they get their phone and they start scrolling and it's just a mind block for them. Like they're, they're kind of stepping away from their, um, you know, their lives for a minute and just kind of relaxing. And so you want to kind of have both. It's a good balance. You want to have something that's eye catching, that's going to capture them if they only have 15 to 30 seconds. But then when people are searching, you want to have that substance, you want to have um, that that content there. So what should you be posting? Okay. Um, this is a list. I don't even know how many is on here. Seven, eight, eight. Um, this is kind of to give you some ideas. So videos. Yes. We talked about that long form videos, reels. Yes. I'm not saying don't use reels. Uh, it's very much the trend right now. It's very much in. So I, I want you, I encourage you to post um, reels as at least once a week, if you can, um, you need to have a mix of sales and non-sales posts on your, your social media. And again, I'm talking either video or static. Um, the, the next thing is very important, industry uh, relevant articles or blogs. And this is going to help situate you as a thought leader in your industry. I don't know if any of you have ever been in my presentations before. I've talked about thought leader before. A thought leader is when somebody thinks of your industry, you pop to mind. So if um, if I'm an HVAC company I um, and somebody's air conditioning breaks, I want them to think of my company first. And so that would position me as a thought leader. The way that you get there is by providing people information that they did not know. So they then trust you because they're like, ah, I didn't know that. So now I'm going to think about that company because they seem to think to know um, what they're talking about. And so sharing industry related information, um, blogs that are not blogs that you write. Um, yes, I would love for you to write blogs and be able to post those on your social media. Those are great things, but sharing other industry specific knowledge. Community involvement. This goes along the lines of what I said earlier, that personal touch is never going to go away. And this is your feel good. This is how people know like, hey, this is a local company. These are local people that invest in my community um, and, and showcase that. Do it in a way that is not bragging or a way that is not saying like, hey, look what I did, but do it in a way that says like we were honored to do this. We love supporting our community. Um, you know, look at um, our technician who played softball last weekend against high schoolers or whatever the case may be, but showcase that. People want to know that they're not always talking to someone out of the country or out of the state even, um, that they're talking to somebody right here local. That, that's never going to go away. Local shout outs. This is a great way um, for you to tag um, businesses and tap into their um, followers. So do a local shout out. If you um, are, you know, local and let's say that you love a coffee, you love coffee at a specific coffee shop, shout them out. Maybe leave a gift card there and tell people, um, you know, leave a $30 gift card and say, hey, we love, you know, the box coffee. If you're in Victoria, that's one of ours here, or PJ's coffee or whatever. We love them so much. We left a gift card. Tell them that it's on us and you can put it on the gift card and give people a free um a free coffee. So this is a way to tap into PJ's or the boxes audience as well as yours. And it just makes people feel good. It makes people feel like, hey, they care about other small businesses or they care about other businesses in our community. They're going to help boost us. Right. So do a local shout out, even if it's once a month or once a quarter, pick another business in the community and shout out to them. Employee spotlights are so important in social media, and that's never going to change. Um, Any time that you can have an actual real person presented on your social media, it is going to have a higher performing rate than a stock image um, or just no image at all. And the reason being is because your reach is going to be so higher. Most of the time, if I posted one of my employees, that employee's mom is going to share it or their aunt, look at my baby girl doing her thing, right? 
And so it's really important to um, highlight the people on your team, not only because you want to make your team feel good, but you're also expanding your reach because now they're going to share it and their mom's going to share it and their friend's going to share it. And now you're just reaching more and more people. And the last thing I have on this list is product features. Pick something to feature that week or that month, um, showcasing people. This kind of goes in with a sales post, um, but featuring your products. I see so many times on social media. And again, remember the reason I'm saying this is because we're using this more and more as a, as a search engine to find information and find services. So they need to know what you do. I see so many times, um, you know, people don't talk about like what they want to do because they don't want to come off as salesy and that's okay. You don't have to come off as salesy. Use chat GPT to say like, Hey, can you give me a non salesy pose? And it'll help generate those words that don't sound, sound so salesy. Um, but showcase what you can do showcase your products. Um, so this is, like I said, what, three, six, nine different ideas that you can use uh, this year, every month, post one video, one reel, one sales post, one non-sales post, one industry-related blog. That's nine posts that can help you um, this, this month and this year uh, with your social media. Okay, so I'm going to move on to visual trends. Um, so this is where I pulled this information. I always like to list my sources if it's not my free thoughts, um, but this is something that we are seeing for design trends in 2024. So the first thing that we're seeing is textured 3D designs. So this, I put a couple examples here, something that's 3D, it almost looks like a balloon. Um, it looks shiny, sparkly, makes you wanna grab it. Um, so that's some of the, the design textures that we're seeing. Um, quirky characters are coming in this year is something that I've been noticing. Um, I love this little coffee guy that's working out, right? Um, you know, maybe you make a character that represents your company or you as the owner, uh, have fun with it, uh, make people smile whenever they're going to social media. That always is a really good thing. Um, sorry, this came out a little blurry, uh, but hand-drawn doodles is another thing that uh, we're seeing a lot of in 2024, um, retro fonts. Um, so if you don't want to be as bold as something like this, you could even use a, 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 sl a, a skinnier font as more legible, but we are seeing a lot of retro this year, both in the colors and in the fonts. Um, metallic is going to be big in 2024. Um, metallic typography or letters in general. Um, Canva, if you're using Canva, has great options right now for these uh, metallic colors um, and textures of letters. Gradient uh, leaks are going to be, so backgrounds, we're going to see uh, pastel background uh, bleeds. Is We're going to see a lot of those this year in social media. Um, again, bold pastel colors are going to be a big thing. Um, so lots of contrast. Um, and then the last one that I found that was really interesting is a visible grid lines. Uh, I created this design because I really couldn't find one. But whenever I was doing my research, I read this two different times that grid lines are going to be very vis uh, visibly appealing uh, in the background. So I actually used that gradient link in the background uh, on top of uh, those grid lines. So that's just some quick uh, design trends that we're going to see this year. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is creating meaningful connections. Um, and so rethink your social media as a tool for genuine community building and deeper relationships. Um, so what that means is connecting on a deeper level with your um with your followers okay so what i what i encourage you to do is ask questions interact with them what do you want to see what do you like or do you like this product or this product um you know do you like the winter it's groundhog day right ask people are you wanting more winter are you wanting more spring um so play have fun with it but create that connection People on social media want to know that they're talking to somebody real. They're talking to a real person. Um, and so connect with them um, by meeting them where they are. So the next thing um, that I want to talk about is the customer puzzle. This is something that 
is super, super important is to know who your audience is and how you can find them. The first thing that you have to do whenever you're thinking about who am I talking to is you have to think about your customer persona. You got to think of who is the ideal person. Now, what this is going to do after you answer these um, eight questions about your potential client is then you can decide what tone you need to use to talk to them. You're going to decide what graphics you need to use. You're going to decide what platform you need to be on. But these questions are super, super important for you to know. You could have multiple customer personas. You could have, you know, service. Um, we have a, um, a community college here that does um education like uh, degrees or associates degrees, and then they have like non-credited degrees. Um, those are two completely different um, demographics of people. And so you might would have to figure, fill this out multiple times. Um, and so think about that. So some of these questions that I want you to answer um, is how old are the people that you are trying to get in front of? Do they have kids? Do they not? Are they younger? So they're probably not parents yet. Um, where do they work and what position do they hold? Are they a CEO? You're trying to get a hold of the, the decision maker for the company? Or are you trying to get a hold of a teacher um, or um, you know, a dentist or the dentist's office manager? So who are they and what are where do they work and what positions do they hold? Where do they live geographically? Um, I'm in Victoria. So, you know, is it Victoria in a 30 mile radius? Well, that barely touches Quero, right? Maybe I want to go 35 miles. Um, is, uh, can you service all of Texas? Can you service nationally? So think about those things. Where do they live? Um, and then what is the value of their home? Uh, are they, um, you know, lower to middle class uh, income, you know, maybe their um, home is valued from 110,000 to 250,000. Is it middle to upper class? Is it 250,000 to a million dollars? Um, what is their annual household income? Again, going back to that route of middle to lower class, middle to upper class, Again, it could be anything. You don't have to necessarily answer all of these questions 100%, but this is super important to know these questions for the next slide that I'm going to go into. What are their hobbies? What do they do for fun? If you're a golfing company, you know, you would want somebody who has a, go a hobby of golfing. Um, if you are, um, let's see, an HVAC company, whereas anybody could need it. Maybe the hobby question isn't as important for you, right? Um, and then what challenges do they face? This is where it could be very important for you as an HVAC person, because maybe their challenge is that their AC just went out and it's June in Texas and it's hot. So we really need to make sure that we're getting in front of them, right? Um, so what challenges do they face? These next couple of slides, and, and again, we're going to send these out to you. These are so, so, so important to use. Um, this is a study done. It was done at the beginning of 2023, so it is almost a year old now, but it has some really, really good data. Based on those eight questions that you answered about your um, customer that you're wanting to be, now we can see um, which platform should I be focusing my time on? Okay, so this is Facebook and I'm sorry, I'm looking over here. This is where my screen is. Facebook has 2.93 billion active monthly users and 1.96 billion active daily users. So that's great. If you're trying to hit somebody that's on social media quite a bit, Facebook is going to be a great platform. Here's the age breakdown. 86% of people ages 18 to 29 use Facebook. 77% of people between the ages of 30 and 49 use Facebook. 51% of people between the ages of 50 and 65 use Facebook. And only 34% of people that are 65 and older use Facebook. So if your target demographic is 65 and older, you know, face, I wouldn't spend all of your time posting on Facebook because you're only going to hit about 34% of your target audience. 
Um, income wise, we have about 85% of households with the annual income of less than 30K use Facebook, 88% of 30 to 60K, 86% of households uh, between the annual income of 80 and 100,000, um, and then 86% of household incomes with above 100,000 uh, use. So pretty even there across on your Facebook targeting there. Uh, gender is pretty split as well, 50% female, 40%, uh, 46% male. Um, on average, users spend 30 minutes a day on the platform. So, and you're gonna see this number on some of these other slides, and I'm not gonna go in all of these slides as, as much detail just for the sake of time, but most of these, um, you're going to see time fluctuations. And this is where I talked about those videos come in handy. This is where longer video can uh, be beneficial because they, they're spending more time. Sometimes if you see that number smaller, like maybe they're only spending four or five minutes a day on the platform, that's where that quick video is going to capture them. So next we have Instagram. Uh, they have a billion monthly users and 500 million daily users. Um, you can see the, the demographic breakdown here. 67% of people are 18 to 29, 47% uh, 30 to 49. Only 23% of people between the ages of 50 and 64 and only 8% of people 65 and older are using Instagram. So again, if your target audience is 50 and above, Instagram should not be your main focus. Um, income, again, most of these are split. The big number that sticks out to me is the 60% of households with an annual um, income of over 100,000 use Instagram. So if you're main target is those people who are spending over 100, you might want to look at spending a little bit more time on your Instagram following. Um, gender is very much split as well. And again, 30 minutes per day on the platform with Instagram. TikTok, the fun new one, um, has a billion monthly users and 50 million daily users. And again, that was the beginning of 2023. So that's probably even higher now. Um, 27% of users are aged 13 to 17, 39% of users are 18 to 24, only 5% are 35 to 44, and then only 0.32 or 55 and above. So again, if your target audience is, you know, 13 to 24, or 18 to even 30, I would say yes, having a presence on TikTok is going to be very beneficial. Remember, this was a year ago. I haven't seen the updated numbers. Um, so, you know, things do change in the year. Um, income, it's pretty split. Uh, again, the highest number is that 100K and above. 7.2% um, is that 60 to 75. Um, we still see a pretty even split on gender there. We do now see, <laughs> this is some interesting information. On average, TikTok users spend 95 minutes per day on the platform and open it eight times. That's really, really interesting to me because again, they're opening it eight times throughout the day. And so to have those quick videos um, you know, pop up would be great. Um, Pinterest, um, this is where we start seeing a big jump in these monthly or daily, um, 433 million monthly users. Um, so that's big because they're, you're only going to be able to capture them, you know, once a month, um, where they only have 15 million daily users. Um, the age here is, is pretty even and not, not anything crazy here. Um, Household income, again, not a crazy lower income. People typically are not using as much Pinterest as maybe a mid uh, income range. Uh, gender, though, is where we start seeing a really big uh, jump. 70% are female, 30% are male. So if your target audience is female, especially like boutiques, um, people, I know for me, I go to Pinterest when I need, I get a pair of pants or I get a new blouse and I'm needing to figure out how to build an outfit, I'll go there and look at what other people are doing. Pinterest users are spending about 14 minutes per day, a lot smaller than Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. Twitter, which is now called X, 
Um, again, we have 436 million monthly, 238 dailies. Here's the, the breakdown, not anything uh, out of the ordinary really here, except in the gender. Gender is 72% male, 27% female. And so that is really important to know if your target audience is male, then you might want to be spending a little bit more time on X. Uh, the 30 minutes a day is still about average here. Um, and then this one is, I think this might be the last one, um, LinkedIn. Uh, again, we're going to see that the biggest change right here is 60% of people ages 25 to 34 are using LinkedIn because those are the people looking for jobs um, right now, right? That's the biggest uh, market for, for hiring. And so that's why we see a big jump here. So if you're hiring or if you're in that industry, um, you know, having a presence on LinkedIn would uh, benefit you for sure. Um, so this is kind of the breakdown here. We have a big dip, 30 to 60K. That could be that, um, you know, people are already having jobs. They're already steady there. Um, again, pretty much an even split, uh, 57 and 43 with males, but we see a lot uh, shorter time span on LinkedIn. Uh, YouTube. Uh, nothing. I don't remember. I don't think anything uh, that that's right. The biggest jump that I remember from here is that the 56 and older have this is the highest um, platform that people are using. So they're watching how to videos, most likely uh, an even split on uh, e uh, income um, and gender and about 45 minutes per day on YouTube. So moving into the last thing and then we'll um, I think I have two more slides and then we'll open up for some questions. Um, one of the biggest things that I want to encourage you to do in 2024 is to track your metrics. It's super, super important that you know what is working for your business and what is not. OK, um, so the first thing is to set KPIs, key performance indicators. I want you to set these for your business, um, like for your social media and then for your business as a whole. I currently have. 2000 followers on my social media. Let me, um, maybe I have a goal or a KPI this year of I want to have 2,500 uh, followers instead of 2,000. Uh, so set those KPIs, set a number that you can reach. Um, you know, I, a follower count, I want to post one time a week this year. That's my goal. I haven't been consistent with my uh, social media. So my KPI this year is I want to actually post. Uh, so set a KPI. Learn to use Facebook Insights. It's very, very, very helpful. It is going to tell you a couple of things. It's going to tell you those demographics that we talked about a while ago. It's going to tell you what your average age is of people who are visiting your page. It's going to tell you your top performing posts. Um, it's going to tell you how many followers you gained this year. So learn Facebook insights. It's very, very user friendly and very, very easy to digest. Um, this one gets a little technical, but track your website traffic of people who are coming to your website from social media. We often think of these as two completely different things, and they are in a sense. Facebook and Google don't really talk to each other, um, but I would want to know how many people are coming from my Facebook to my website, because my website is where you can get that meat of your business, that meat of what you do, a meat about you. And so track how many people are coming from your social media. You can do this through Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a free service. Um, you just have to have a Gmail set up. I highly, highly encourage you to set that up on your website. Check analytics and insights on a monthly or quarterly basis. A lot of people wait until October, November, or December to say, well, how did we do this year? And it's a little too late. It's too much data. And then you could have wasted an entire year of doing something that's not producing ROI for you. So that's why I say to check it on a monthly or a quarterly basis. Check your um, insights. Did you gain any followers? Maybe your top for performing post was a funny meme and people really liked that and resonated with that. Do more of that throughout the year. Don't wait until the end of the year to say, oh, what am I going to do, right? Um, and 
this is something I say all the time, but pivot when necessary. If you have a post that you spent three hours building in Canva, you have content that you've spent hours writing out and it only got five or six interactions, do something different pivot when necessary. It might be something that makes you feel so good and you want to do it and that's okay, um, but make sure that you're able to pivot when necessary. And then these are just a little bit of tips and tricks with your social media. Don't be afraid to have fun. Social media, again, remember, is a relaxing place for people. They're wanting to unwind from the day. Have fun with it. Have fun with the trends. You know, we there's so many fun video trends on TikTok. If you have an employee that's willing to do that and willing to have fun with it, utilize that. People want to smile when they go to social media. It's very much flooded with politics and, and craziness and negativity. It's great when we can go to social media and get a break of that and get something that makes us smile. Plan out your social media for at least a month ahead of time and schedule it. So um, I gave you, what, nine ideas earlier of how you can utilize your social media um, and, and schedule that schedule it out, use a Facebook publisher or use something like Hootsuite or Buffer um, and actually schedule out your post a month in advance. That doesn't mean that you can't pivot, right? You need to pivot when necessary, but schedule that out. Have a little bit of a boosting budget. Um, if you see that a post is performing well, boost it. Add a little bit of dollars behind it. This is not fully running ads and it should never take the place of fully running ads on social media. But it's a good to have a little bit of a budget to play with, especially on those posts that you see are performing very well. Have unique content for each platform. As you saw on the slides earlier, and this is why I wanted to um, give you those slides of which platform is seeing which demographic, um, it's, it's important that a lot of what a lot of people do is they spend all this time creating content or a graphic, and then they're just posting it across LinkedIn, their Google business profile, their, their Facebook, their Instagram, maybe even their TikTok, right? Well, the demographic for each of those platforms is completely different. And so it's super important for you to realize that, you know, not something that is um, it, it, that's going to speak to somebody in their 60s is not going to speak to somebody in their in 18 as uh, it's not going to speak the same to them. Um, don't be afraid to add a personal touch. Um, if you're goofy and you like, um, you know, to do fun things again, make a video about that. Or if you, um, you know, have a signature saying that you say, add that personal touch. And then ask people where they found you. Did they find you on social? Did they find you on your website, Google, whatever? Don't be afraid to ask people where they heard about you. Um, so we'll go into questions now. This is my information. You're more than welcome to reach out. I would love to talk to you more in detail um, about some of the trends that we're seeing. I have a QR code here that you can scan. It'll take you to my link tree that has my contact information and my LinkedIn if you ever want to try to share relevant information there. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think we will open it up now, Lindsay, to um, questions. Okay, sounds great. Um, there was a little glitchiness with the chat, but I think I've got it turned back on. So please feel free okay. to use that if you need. Uh, but let me check out the Q&A here. All right, so on which social media platforms, oops, sorry, hold on one sec. On which social media platforms can you use the automated chat messenger option? Is that only through Facebook? Uh, Facebook and Instagram for sure. I uh, TikTok doesn't have a messaging feature. I do believe that LinkedIn has a feature as well that you can have some automated messaging, um, but for sure, Facebook and Instagram. Okay, great. All right, next question. Uh, we are a small all-volunteer nonprofit dedicated to helping urban wildlife. How fun. Apart from caring for orphaned and injured animals, we also do a lot of educational work and give advice. How can we identify our customer persona? We are usually dealing with people from all walks of life. Very good. So I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, you're probably wanting to maybe get more volunteers or 
more donors. Those are two completely different demographics that you're going to want to think about. Um, donors, you're going to be looking at that middle to higher end income. You're going to want to target those, right? If you're looking for volunteers, um, you know, searching for uh, people who need, you know, community service hours or uh, like NJHS uh, offers, you know, they those students, those uh, seniors have to get so many volunteer hours. So reaching out there. Um, but I would say you're going to have to identify exactly what you're doing. If you're having like a fundraiser um, and you're trying to identify who your target audience is, you're going to have to identify, you know, am I going after those donors? Because if that's the case, I'm looking at my higher end level. If I'm going after more volunteers, it is going to be more of a broad spectrum. Um, but I think identifying what exactly you're needing and then following those questions. Um, some of those questions are not going to be relevant to you, and that's okay. Um, but figuring out, like, can I have 13 year olds? Do I want moms that have older kids? Um, you know, thinking through things like that will help you identify that customer persona. Okay, good people. Um, next question. Uh, should two to five minute videos be posted as reels or in regular posts? That's a, this is a two part question. So let's start with that because that's a great question. Yes, it should be um, posted as a post. You can do a highlight in your reel to kind of drive people to your page to um, have them watch the full video. So maybe taking bits and pieces of your full length video. I know we're talking about video editing and stuff here at this point, um, but if you can, if you have the ability to take bits and pieces and then use that highlight as a reel um, and then drive people, but a two to five minutes should not be. Actually, I think reels, um, I want to say the highest that you can do is three minutes currently. I do believe that they are um, trying to switch that up to be higher, but I think right now it's two minutes on reels. Okay, but great. I, I would and say for sure post. Awesome. And the second part to the question, could Instagram stories be repurposed as a post at a later date? Absolutely. I would encourage you to do that. Um, now, the formatting is typically different between the two. Um, you're going to see more of a rectangular uh, style video for a reel, um, whereas on a post, you're looking at more of a traditional square. So you might have to do some editing in that um, to where you can repurpose that. But if nothing else, yes, I would absolutely say that either scheduling it as both a reel and a post or later on coming back and using that reel as a post would be very, very, very good. Okay. Uh, this is about Facebook and Instagram. Are they duplicate populations or unique populations? Very different populations. There is some um, correlation between the two, um, but I would ultimately say, and re reference back to those slides that I shared earlier about which demographic falls in where, traditionally you're going to see the Instagram be a tad younger than Facebook. Um, Facebook, you're going to see a little bit older. Um, you're, you're probably not going to find an 18 year old or a 21 year old on Facebook, but you would find them on Instagram. So it's, it's going to come down to that customer persona. Who are you trying to really get in front of? Um, so there is a little bit of a difference, but you do have to remember they are owned by the same people. So it is extremely easy to talk to both. Um, there are some key differences if you are posting. Uh, Instagram is very hashtag heavy. Facebook is not. Uh, Instagram is you don't do a lot of emojis, whereas Facebook, you can have a little bit of emojis. So that's why I say to take the content and kind of repurpose it. It can be the same meat. It could be the same core, but kind of do those trends that it a little bit different, whereas like add more hashtags on Instagram and more emojis on Facebook. Um, but overall, the, the tar target demographic is going to be a tad different between the two. Okay. And the last question that I'm seeing, let's see. Can you talk a little bit about media burnout when it comes to millennials and some of the older generations? Ooh, that's a really good that's a question. really good question. I don't know that I've ever been asked that. Um, I would say media burnout could happen. I just don't think that it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, I think that we're always going to see something new that kind of re sparks 
something in people. As far as like the older generation, um, I, I don't see them fading out. I do maybe see the age dropping a little from maybe 65 to more around like the 55, 60 range. Um, but I don't foresee, I, I, I could be speaking, I haven't done a ton of research on media burnout uh, in, in all transparency. I don't foresee it truly, truly happening. Um, I, I do think that it could, but I think then the next new thing would just pop up and kind of take its place and respark that. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for that. That's a really good question. That is right. And I'm cruising through the chat and the Q&A and I'm not seeing anything else. And so to be respectful of everybody's time, we'll go ahead and wrap up. So I want to thank you for hanging out with us today. We really hope that you learned something new about a trend that can, that you can potentially adopt uh, for your business over the next year. Um, Jennifer had her contact information up on the screen, and of course, you'll get it again in the um, in the presentation recording. Our contact information is on the screen, and it's also um, dropped in the chat. So check us out online, and if you're interested in any advising services, you can find more information on our website and register through there. Um, so grab a phone, take a picture of the QR code if you want, or wait until you get the recording. What that does is take you to our survey uh, where we can learn a little more about what you liked about the event and different topics that you'd like to see in the future. Uh, we take careful time to read each one and use the responses to make our um, program better for you and something that you're looking for to receive for your business, whatever topic that is. Uh, so with that, we will go ahead and close out. I'm going to double check again under the Q&A and I don't see anything. So thank you all for joining us and we hope to see you at our next event. Bye everyone. Bye.